So this video might be a big surprise to a lot of people. Jared Goff had a good season last year. Brad Holmes has said he's the quarterback moving forward. But I'm calling bullshit flat out on that because you have to understand that Jared Goff in 2024 is hitting free agency. And if Daniel Jones just signed a $160 million contract, Goff's a much better quarterback. He's probably going to demand at least $40 million, probably $42, 43 And Goff, if you look at his advanced numbers, he had a 71.6 passing grade and a 72.4 overall offensive grade, both ranked 22nd among all quarterbacks. The Lions are limited with Goff, and their fans aren't going to want to hear that. And to be honest with you, I get it, because he was playing some of the best quarterback in the second half that the history uh, the franchise has ever seen in its history. But also, Goff, he doesn't have a deep ball, which is why the Lions have to get rid of the ball out of his hand as quickly as they possibly can. And let's be real, they've got a lot of talent. How many teams can claim to have as much offensive talent as Amon Ross St. Brown, who went over a thousand yards? DJ Chark, when he came back in the second half and was healthy, looked like an absolute stud. DeAndre Swift, say what you want about his injuries when he's on the field, which you know, towards the end he was, and he was as elusive as I've ever seen him. Jamal Williams led the league in touchdowns. Jamison Williams is going to be having a full season. You talk about a Deshaun Jackson type of athlete. First game back, catches a touchdown, right? And then the offensive line. It wasn't even fully healthy all season, and it was still a top 10 unit, especially against the run, or I guess running the football is where they thrive at. So Jared Goff, when you put a run game around him, when you put weapons, you have Ben Johnson, who took a 29th rank offensive team to fifth. Everything was basically handed to Goff. And give him credit because he had a really good season. He did struggle with turnovers early on, especially the first, what, like five, six games, fumbles, interceptions, some of them even going for touchdowns. But I'm not fully sold on Jared Goff. I'm just not. I don't think he's the team's future quarterback next season, sure. This is a Geno Smith situation, basically. It's like, okay, here we go. Next season, you're our guy. But after that, we need someone else. And that brings in Lamar Jackson. Now, I don't understand one bit why so many people are not eyeing Lamar Jackson. Why? Because he wants 50 million a year? Well, Daniel Jones is making 40. Eric Carr is only a few million under that. Geno Smith's making a ton of money. Jared Goff is going to be over 40 million because if Daniel Jones got 40, why wouldn't Goff? Goff's a better quarterback. So I'm looking at Lamar and I'm saying that he has the fourth most wins since entering the league. If you look at what he's done since... 2018 I believe it was a 45 and 16 record at the top of my head and what did the Ravens do without him they went two and eight you know they were an eight win football team before Lamar got hurt if you put Lamar into a system with Ben Johnson and these weapons in a defense that by the way looked very good in the second half of the season it wasn't a top 10 defense by any means but give credit to Aaron Glenn because the Lions, they were last in defense. The first eight weeks of the season, they were last in terms of points allowed. And then I want to say they got up all the way to 12th in the second half. They were still giving up a ton of yards. But hey, they've got the sixth pick in the draft. They've got free agency. This isn't a one or two year window, guys, to win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. This is a three to four to five year that they'd have to compete. And the Lions... I don't believe they won a Super Bowl. Maybe they did like, way back in the day, but at least of recent, I can't remember the Lions winning a Super Bowl. They certainly haven't won the division since I've been alive. So I just look at them and I'm saying that they're never going to be in a situation like this again, or at least for a long time, right? Where they have the sixth pick, the 18th pick. They have top 10 money in, in free agency in terms of salary. You need to go out there and maximize your potential. Can I see the Lions winning a Super Bowl with Jared Goff? Oh yeah, I can. I'm not going to you know, be deluded. The Rams, they went to the Super Bowl when they had Todd Gurley. They had a, you know, weapons around him and they had a good coach. Of course, my mic just randomly happened to disconnect. So continuing on, we've seen Goff go to a Super Bowl. If you look at the current NFC playoff picture that just happened, Bucks, Cowboys, Vikings, Giants, 49ers, Seahawks, Eagles, of course, had a bye. The Lions, they finished the season off 8-2. They also had the fifth most difficult schedule, according to win percentage in the league. 
So next season, the sky's the limit for this football team. My only concern is, what's their ceiling with Jared Goff at quarterback? Because, sure, the 49ers, if Brock Purdy didn't get injured, maybe they go to the Super Bowl. The 49ers also have the best defense in the league. An unreal offense, top five. Everything is Kyle Shanahan is as brilliant as it gets. They just have a lot more to work with. You just you have a, the better quarterback, you have the higher ceiling. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Eagles. Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts, right? You look at the other you know, top you know, th- two seeds besides the Chiefs. The Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen. The Bengals at three with Joe Burrow. Jaguars at four with Trevor Lawrence. So... You know, the Ravens, they were the sixth seed with Lamar. The Chargers were the fifth seed. They have Justin Herbert. Dolphins had Tua. I mean, he was healthy, almost unbeatable. The NFC, there's just not that great of quarterback play. Brady retired. Dak Prescott is probably more of a liability than a positive thing to have to this point with how much money he makes considering the production. Kirk Cousins isn't getting any younger. Daniel Jones is, like, pretty average, I'd say. And then Geno Smith... Had a good season. He's been a backup, though, his entire career. I mean, he hadn't started since the first two years of his career. He's 32 now. So, And then 49ers, they ended up trading three first-round picks to go up and get Lance. So trading two first-round picks is not bad by any means if you're getting Lamar Jackson. If you're doing it for an unknown talent, yeah, sure, he's cheaper. But again, it's more of a risk to do that than it is to go out there. Because you know what you're getting in Lamar. The only legitimate concern that I have for Lamar is his durability, but he also averages 10 rushing attempts per game. He wouldn't have to do that in Detroit because they have Jamal Williams, who I imagine is coming back. DeAndre Swift's still there, and they could end up drafting another running back in the mid-rounds and try to get three going. Because I feel like the Lions, they, they haven't really had all their backs out there healthy. So that's the thing for them is they have a great rushing attack, as we've seen. But they just need to get production from that number three back, not just two, not just one, right? So I just I like this move a lot for the Lions. I think the best fit possible for Lamar would be the Raiders because they have the seventh pick. They have Devontae Adams and Waller and Renfro and Jacobs, and they've got McDaniels and the Raiders. They're competing in a division with Mahomes and Herbert. I think that's the best fit right now. Because the Raiders are, I would, I don't know if you can't say the Raiders are in more win now more than the Lions, because the Lions are a much better team than the Raiders. Um, I, I just, I don't think the Lions should pass up on the opportunity for Lamar. I don't know what would throw them off. Is it shouldn't be Jared Goff. You can't be like we've got Jared Goff. We don't need Lamar. I, I just don't think that's a legitimate reason. Lamar's a much better quarterback. I mean, Goff's a system guy. It's no doubt about it. Like if we've seen Lamar last season play very well, he had the 30th ranked wide receiver corpse. And he still went out there and threw for 2,242 yards, 17 touchdowns against seven interceptions. He also rushed for another 764 and three touchdowns. So you give him St. Brown and Jamison Williams. The Lions have some pretty good tight ends even after trading TJ Hawkinson. He's going to be protected. The defense is getting better. It's extremely young. I feel like Lamar would fit in this culture. Lamar just wants to win. That's all he cares about. And the Lions, all they want to do is win. You put that together, you know, get this guy paid, bring him in. It's just a perfect fit. The more I think about it, the more I see the Lions being interested in this. Now, nothing's been reported. I haven't seen anyone say that the Lions are interested in Lamar, but I haven't seen them say that they aren't. We've seen teams come out and say that they don't want Lamar. They're not interested. The Lions have yet to do that. doesn't mean that they are interested, but I just I see a team that legitimately, after this draft free agency and adding in that elite-level quarterback, man, they could be the favorites to win it all. They really could be, and... Ben Johnson, he would be able to open up the playbook more as well with Lamar because Lamar, of course, has a deep ball. He's also extremely athletic. And it's hard enough for teams to predict what the Lions are trying to do offensively, yet alone with that guy. I mean, if you have a chance to get the best quarterback in your conference, 26 years old, newly turned in January, I think you have to do that. But let me know your thoughts on that video, Lions fans. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I post at least one video every single day in the NFL. And until next time, guys, peace.